Good morning. It's good to be with you once again as you share with us here in the Sherwood Forest Methodist Circuit morning service. Uh, this is number five in a series of six services where we're looking at being called. And we've looked at several characters in the Bible and seen what we can learn from them. Today, I guess we're going for the top man. We're looking at Jesus and uh, reading from Isaiah will talk to us about how Jesus reacted to other people when he had to know and share the gospel. So today we are looking at Jesus. We join Jesus as he travels uh, to Nazareth, the place where he grew up. Now, it's the Sabbath day. Sabbath is a Hebrew word and it means rest. Now for Jesus and for Jewish people, their Sabbath day is a Saturday because their week starts on a Sunday and they are thinking about the seventh day being a day of rest. For us, it's a Sunday because the start of our week is a Monday. 
Now, the reason the Sabbath is on the seventh day and named the day of rest is all about when God created the world. We can find that in the book of Genesis. Days one to six, he was busy creating, but on day seven, he rested. It was the Sabbath day. Jesus went to the synagogue. The synagogue is a place of worship. A bit like when we go to a building to see our church family and worship. He gets to the synagogue and he is invited to read. And the book he reads is the book of Isaiah. Now Isaiah is another prophet from the Old Testament, just like we've looked at many before. He was there because God asked him to share a message with people. But now Jesus is here and Jesus reads from the book of Isaiah and he talks about some different things. He talks about how God chose him to tell the good news. That God sent him to the people who get things wrong. To tell the blind that they will be able to see again. And to free those who haven't been treated the way they should have done. And to let everybody know that the Lord will show kindness to his people. When he has said all these things, he hands the book back and he sits down. And everybody just looks at him. And they think, isn't he a good guy? He's Joseph's son, isn't he? Joseph the carpenter. And then he says something. While you heard these words just now, they were coming true. You see, Isaiah, when he spoke them, was speaking on behalf of God. But Jesus, Jesus was sent by God to change everything. And Jesus was there to make those words become real. He was there to change everything. We are Christians. We love God and we try to follow and act like Jesus did. That means treating people like Jesus would have done. Standing up for people like Jesus would have done. It means we are called to be like him. To be there for those people who need it most, who nobody else looks after, who nobody else stands up for, who nobody else walks alongside. We can be the smiling face. We can be the friend. We can be the person that takes the time. Today's reading is from Luke 4 verses 14 to 22. Jesus begins his Galilean ministry. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue, on the Sabbath day, and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. 
Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? Here end the reading for today. Amen. Well, we carry on our theme about calling. Of course, when we talk about callings, we don't talk just about people who become ministers or become local preachers. We talk about all Christians who seek to do the will that Christ wants them to do as they take part in his mission. And his mission is simply to bring the love of God and his love into a relationship with each person so they may become part of his kingdom. But we're looking at Jesus today and we heard in the reading from Luke's Gospel, where Jesus is preaching in his local synagogue. He's preaching because he's been given the scrolls, or the Old Testament as we would say today, and he has read a particular passage. The particular passage he reads is from Isaiah, and we recognise that passage as being part of what we call the Isaiah Masonic uh, inclusion. And Isaiah is talking about the coming of the Messiah. And Jesus boldly says, today, this is happening. You're seeing it. You are part of this wonderful moment in history. Their reaction? This is Joseph, the local carpenter's son. What can he be saying to us? And yet we now recognise this as the start of his ministry. A short ministry, only three years. But when was he made aware that he was so special? Well, when he was 12, he went to the uh, temple in Jerusalem. He went down with the family for an annual visit. And as part of his visit, he gets mislaid and lost. The family travel away. He suddenly realises he's not with them and go back and take three days. So for four days, Jesus is on his own in Jerusalem. And there's no reason to not believe that he spent those four days within the temple and in that area. And most of that time talking to some of the leaders of the Jewish faith and holding his own, to the point that all were amazed how he could speak to them and his knowledge. I don't know about you, I don't think I could talk or could have done at the age of 12 to the leaders of my church and expecting to hold my own. Was Jesus aware that this was something special? Or did he just take it as part of something that was happening to him? Of course it was part of his preparation. But that question always niggles. When did Jesus actually become aware of his calling? Another suggestion is when he was baptised by John the Baptist in the River Jordan. And we read that account in Luke and we see these words. When he's been baptised, he looks up. There's a break in the crowd, cloud and a dove form lights upon him. And these words are said, you are my son whom I love. I am well pleased with you. Was that his point of ordination? Was that the point when he knew exactly what it was all about? But if we follow the story, immediately after that, he goes into the desert for 40 days, a little bit like the 40 days of Lent we're celebrating at the moment. And in the desert, he is tempted very severely by the devil, comes out uh, top dog and wins all three challenges and then goes back to be among the people. Is this the point when Jesus realises exactly what his call is and what he has to do about it? For it's after that we see him really becoming active to the point of calling disciples to gather around him and specifically give them their callings. I wonder how you felt as we've been looking at these readings and we've spoken about them over the weeks. I wonder if it's nudged you at all. Nudged you into thinking, is this something I should be doing? You may 
been considering yourself too old and thinking, well, I have served my time. Surely God is not calling me. God calls anybody and everybody at any time in their lives. And the call may be a simple thing, like asking you to become a prayer warrior, someone who spends a good amount of time in prayer and supports perhaps those who are more active in their calling and so much need your prayers. If you talk to your ministers, I'm sure they will all agree with me that we are very much aware of the prayers that support us in the role that we're called to fulfill. Just something I'd like to say about Jesus and his calling. I mentioned when he was 12, he was very knowledgeable of the uh, writings, what we would call the Old Testament, and very much so when he appears to be doing his first preaching in the synagogue. And he was assured, of course, that he was doing his father's will. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Nothing I say comes from me, but from the Father. That's where we need to be if we're going to follow the call that Jesus gives us. We need to be at that moment when we can say, I am one with Jesus, and Jesus is one with me. And therefore, relying on him, I can do as I'm called to do. And I can do it with the assurance that he will approve. Take some time this week, perhaps a quiet time on your own or perhaps a quiet time with a friend and share some thoughts about how you think you might be being called. As a circuit, we are looking at major changes in the way we want to run our churches. And there are many challenges we will have to accept. But I firmly believe that God may well be wanting to change how this circuit is operated. And if he does, he will want every one of us to take part and offer our skills to him. When were you last out, walking and feeling depressed, and someone came by and just smiled, and you walked away feeling so much better? Sometimes that's all your calling is, to show love to those who feel unloved. But it may be more than that. But the only way you'll find out is by having a relationship and a conversation with Jesus Christ. Amen.
servant king Come see his hands and his feet The scars that speak of sacrifice Hands that flung stars into space To cruel nails surround Let us pray. Jesus calls us all the tumult of our life's wild, restless sea. Day by day his sweet voice soundeth, saying, Christian, follow me. Heavenly Father, we praise you. You're a caring, loving and understanding God, our God, the one we worship. Forgive us for so often feeling we've been plunged into a restless sea and we find ourselves floundering, not hearing your voice or being rescued by you. Forgive us for not hearing your call over the noise of our business and for failing to follow you closely as you want us to. Calm our spirits. Open our hearts to respond to your call. We thank you that Jesus came and fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah and has welcomed us to take a share in spreading the good news that God loves everyone and wants to bless them. We know that in our strength we are not able to do the things you ask us to, but we know that if we trust you to do the things through us, all you ask is possible. As we pray, let us ask God to speak to us about how he wants to use us so that he can bless the people and the situations we bring to him. May your good news be spread to all whose lives have little meaning. We ask that they are brought light and joy. We ask for blessings on the poor, the homeless, the hungry children, the people who live in poverty and cannot see how they can be any different. Send your people to intervene and help. We think of the people who are in prisoners, to things around them or to other people, the addicts, the ones being bullied, the ones being abused, the ones who are subject to those who have a hold over them or are subject to modern slavery. We ask that they be freed. We pray for people who are discriminated against and bring situations that we know about to you. Expose the folk doing it and release those discriminated against. We pray for folk who cannot see, the blind and all those who have no vision. Heal and inspire, we pray. Bring light 
colour and beauty into their lives. For those who are blinkered, raise their blinkers and show them the beauty of creation and the joys that they can have by being released. We pray for the many who suffer. We think of the different types of suffering and ask that you will send comforters to help each person. Be the hand that gently pulls them out of their situation and give them hope. As the number affected by the pandemic reduces, we continue to thank you for the ones who have been and still are on the front line of serving us, often at personal cost to them. As we think of the ones we know, we ask that you bless them. As children return to school, we ask for blessing for them, their teachers, the teaching assistants and helpers of all kinds that are involved. May the coming days bring joy and hope. Father, we pray for all of this in the name of Jesus. Let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Has your heart been stirred? Are you still prepared to follow? Have you made a choice to remain and serve? Though the way be rough and narrow, will you walk the path that will cost you much and embrace the pain and sorrow? Will you trust?
We hope you've enjoyed your time with us and that you feel blessed as I close with a blessing acknowledging those who answer the call to serve and are seeking to do so. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son came not to be served but to serve, bless we ask you all who, following in his steps, give themselves to service of others, that with wisdom, patience, love and courage they may minister in his name to the suffering, the friendless and the needy, for the love of him who laid down his life for us, your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Don't forget to join us for our workshop this afternoon at four o'clock or our workshop on Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock. Please contact us for the Zoom details.